again, everybody. Oklahoma over Kansas, 70, 70 to 72 to 70, and we're getting down to the wire. The last semifinal coming up in just moments, Nebraska and Iowa State. Hi, we're back. I'm Kevin Kiley. Iowa State is a giant killer. They've knocked off the two big ones in the Big 8 already this year. They took on Oklahoma and Kansas, and they beat them both, but they beat them in Ames. Today, they'll have to go at it here in Kemp Arena against a team that's found itself. Without Dave Hopp in Nebraska, has proved to be very dangerous. How do you defense them? Where do you go against this team? They don't always go to the middle for their offense anymore. For those answers, we're going to go right now to Jay Randolph and one of the all-time great Cyclones, Gary Thompson. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. And will it be Iowa State or Nebraska that will meet the Jayhawks of Kansas here tomorrow afternoon in the championship game of this Big 8 tournament? It is a great pleasure to have the former All-American from Iowa State, Gary Thompson, here to analyze this one. Gary, Iowa State and Nebraska, two very different ball clubs. Very talented, but very different in their style of play. Well, I think that's true, Jay. Nebraska likes to control the tempo on the offense. They'll run the break, but it's control break. When they take it on the break, they'll look for it on the first thrust. If they don't get it, they'll back it out and get into their offense. Iowa State, meanwhile, likes the pressure. They like to cause the turnovers. They have to lead in steals and turnovers. That's their game. Get up and down the court quick on the transition break. Of course, they come off two different sides. Nebraska shot the ball 64% last night. Iowa State came off a poor shooting night, 40-some percent, yet was able to win. Gary, one of the items that comes so much into view in a tournament like this, and we saw it in game one this afternoon when Kansas got great play out of Archie Marshall off the bench. Who has the strongest bench, would you guess? Both of these teams have good benches, I believe. Well, they do have. Uh, they got some role players for Nebraska. Iowa State maybe has the edge on the bench as far as offensive production. All right, we look forward to this one. Nebraska and Iowa State going at it to see who will meet the Jayhawks in the final tomorrow. We'll introduce the starting fives right after this. Your starting lineups for today's second semifinal game. First for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. At forward, 6'5", junior from Washington, D.C., number 30, Bernard Day. At forward, 6'7", senior from Lincoln, Nebraska, number 50, John Matsky. At center, 6'5", senior from Natchez, Mississippi, number 32, Chris Logan. At guard, 6'3", senior from Jackson, Tennessee, number 13, R.V. Marshall. And at guard, 6'1", junior from Muncie, Indiana, number 20, Brian Carr. Forward, 6 4 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Ron Virgil. At forward, 6 5 sophomore from Flint, Michigan, number 44, Jeff Brayer. At center, 6 9 junior from Chicago, Illinois. sophomore from Jackson, Michigan. Number three, Gary Tompkins. And a guard, 6'3", senior from LaGrange, Illinois. Number 14, Jeff Hornison. The coaches, Johnny Orr for Iowa State, 50 years or 58 years old in his sixth season, a native of Yale, Kansas. 45-year-old Mo Ayaba, born in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Back with a tip-off after this from Budweiser. There's Johnny Orr's misses. Robbie, and she's a great fan of the Iowa State Cyclones. Gary? Well, I could... Folks from your part of the world have come down here in droves to see them play. Well, they're really supporting this Cyclone team since Johnny Orr got there, and uh, there's a look at the officials for tonight, or this afternoon's game, Jay. Mike Corey. Oh, that's Woody Mayfield, Mayfield on, Woody the left. on the left. Mike in the uh, center, and then the third official we got there is Tom O'Neill. 
All right, and we're set to go. Get things started. Sam Hill will be jumping for the Cyclones. There's a little delay as they're getting the scoreboard squared away. Problem with changing that. And Chris Logan will be jumping for Nebraska. Nebraska in their red uniforms and the Cyclones in white. Nebraska with a record of 20 and 8. The Cyclones 19 and 9. Cyclones best finish since the 77 78 season and uh, apparently there's some problem with getting the names up there on the scoreboard as you can see and we have a little delay before we tip it off Johnny Orr is a great football star and basketball store at the University of Illinois and then at Beloit Wisconsin College in the Hall of Fame of yep. uh, Beloit now we're ready to go Hill against Logan. Tap control back to Virgil of the Cyclone. This is Hornacek. Number three is Gary Tompkins into Virgil. Well, and that's a good starting play, Jay, right there, because Nebraska comes out, they pressure up on you tough defensively, and that will maybe loosen up some of the pressure right away because you start guarding against that back door. Number 50 is Matsky, back out to Brian Carr, and around to 13, Harvey Marshall. Matsky had a very fine game here last night. Nebraska uses that motion offense. They were brilliant in their shooting in the first half, and for that matter, the entire game last evening here. That one won't go down for Marshall. Battle for, and he picks it up. Does Marshall back outside? Marshall was seven out of nine, and he started off last night from that same position, hit about three in a row, or three out of the first four. And they just shot the ball uh, great in Nebraska last night, all night long. They complement each other with the inside game and the outside game. That was another of the kids, Brian Carr, that really shot well outside. Carr saves it nicely, got it back in there today. Day gets it way back out front with 15 on the shot clock. Nebraska winning here 82-75 over Oklahoma State last night. The Cyclones 78-60 over Colorado. Carr's shot won't go down. Hornacek back to the attack for the Cyclones. And that's not the kind of shots that Moiba wants to end up with, that 20-22 footer. This is a nice soft jumper off the hands of Gary Tompkins, his first basket, and it's four to nothing. Tompkins normally does not shoot that much outside, but he's shooting 59% plus from the field, and he's very selective. He's another one of those role players that knows his strengths. Day gets the first basket for Nebraska. Well, Day comes off a career high 25 last night, and that went over Oklahoma State, and had good ball games against Iowa State in the previous two. Hornacek bangs it down from 17. Did you notice a little something there with Hornacek? He kicked his feet up as that ball was going in the air. He's been struggling shooting. Two out of ten last night, and that may be just the thing Iowa State needs for him to get that first shot down and regain some confidence. Iowa State is three for three from the field. Nebraska one for three from the field. That's a six to two game. Early going here. The winner to meet Kansas. A 72-70 winner over Oklahoma. Brian Carr for Nebraska. Carr, the junior from Burris High in Muncie, Indiana. Good job by Carr that time. Got a bump off on uh, Hornacek, but did not rush the shot. He took his time, regrouped, got his legs under him, and got the shot. There's a good matchup uh, on offense. Hornacek and Marshall, who covers him defensively, who's a little quicker. To make things in uh, life tough for him today, I'm sure. Carr taking it all away after Dreyer had missed down at the other end and a foul charged against Tompkins of the Cyclones. That is his first. Team foul number one. 17 minutes to play in the first half. Brian Carr will trigger it in for Nebraska. Clubs come off a different type of games last night. Jay, Iowa State a little sluggish, uh, did not shoot well. Where can't, or Nebraska, I thought, just played an excellent basketball game last night all the way around. Defensively, offensively, shot the ball. Logan shot doesn't go. Hornacek rebounds. Pass to Hill. Hill gets it down. Tompkins put it up. Batted around. Coming away with it for Nebraska was Harvey Marshall. Quick hands in there on the deflection and the steal, save two. Marshall, he can't get it to go. Matsky tapped it back out. 
again, we'll mention you have to have possession for a backcourt foul, backcourt violation there. That's why they can keep playing. I heard some fans behind me, Jay, say, over and back, over and no. back, you know. Not unless there's possession. Right. feeling each other out, Gary, in the early going. They're very well-drilled units. This matchup, look, Nebraska, they'll come out if the pressure is gone. They'll go back door and try and take the pressure off. Good outside shot by Carr. Carr gets it down from 25. He has four points, and the score is tied at six. First time we've been tied. In the lane, Virgil. Let's see. Are they going to give the basket? I don't think so. I think the foul was before the shot. For Nebraska, Anthony Bayless coming into the lineup, number 14, to replace Matsky. And we're going to get a timeout. That foul was the first personal on Matsky and team foul number two. 15.30 to play in the first half. The Big 8 Conference. The tournament, second semifinal game. Nebraska's defense allowing 66 points a game. First in the Big A Conference. Nebraska scoring in a 71.7 clip. Iowa State Cyclones, 76.7. They've been giving up 69 points a game to their opponents. There's Johnny Orr, native of Yale, Kansas. Jim Hallahan with Wesley and Steve Antrim, his assistants. You know, defense is an area that Johnny Orr has really improved this Cyclone club in, too. You know, 69 points a game uh, giving up is not that bad when you consider uh, Nebraska's number one in the league, uh, giving up 66.4. Hornacek off the glass. Charge on Hornacek. Puts his hand up. He knew it. First on Hornacek. Well, Hornacek, I think, is the crucial guy. Gives a little head fake, gets Marshall up, goes in. But Nebraska, you always have to be alert for Nebraska because they play the great helping defense, and they're right there to fill that gap. Hornacek gets the charge. They do have the ability to meld together, don't they? Score tied at 6. 15-20 to play, first half. <laughs> Driving in and getting it is Bernard Day. Well, showed good hands right there because he lost control of it, was able to still take it up, put it to the basket. Day has four points. Nebraska leads it eight to six. First time they've led. Here's a foul charged as Jeff Grayer went up. Foul is on Logan, his first, and team foul number three. If they can get the ball to Grayer, their number one scorer down inside, he'll be able to operate. Uh, Nebraska's not big in there. Grayer matches up real well, and he's extremely tough when he gets that ball inside. He's much like Kennedy for Oklahoma. Grayer doesn't get as much play as he should probably because there's another sophomore in this league named Danny Manning. But Grayer is averaging 21.2 as his first point of the game. Grayer shooting at 62.6 from the line, had 18 against Colorado. And he's been recognized, Jay, for his talents. He made the All Big Eight team. By yeah, Hornacek. Make well, the tip run. in, and I'm going to guess that they give it to Hornacek. Yeah, he has four points. Well, that's, Nine to eight. That's an area you have to watch with Iowa State. They have good rebounding guards. Hornacek averaging 3.9 rebounds, and Tompkins 2-2, two -two, and that's a lot of rebounding out of the guard court. Ryan Carr getting it to Logan. Back to Carr. Inside, Day turns off the glass. It's good. The foul on Grayer. Grayer committing the foul. Are well, you going to look at the day a transfer out of Oberly Junior College here? Great athletic ability. Quick takes it. Look at him take it away. And then Grayer, as he comes down, catches him across the arm. And there you've got Day who uh, had his career night last night with 25 going for the three pointer. And Day is three for three from the field. Ooh. Gets nothing. That'll get some air there. ball. That'll get a few <laughs> air ball chance. That's always embarrassing uh, for a player when that happens. You kind of, there's no place to go. You'd like to crawl in the hole, but it's Can't not there. Can't hide here, <laughs> right. can you? 
Nebraska leading 10-9 over Iowa State. Cyclones with the ball with 14-15 to go in this first half. Ball away jumper won't go down for Tompkins. Rebound taken by Carr. They've got three on three. Carr spinning it to Bayless. Bayless in tight. Now in the lane, it is Logan. Logan holding on. They bring it back out to set it up. But I thought Bayless might have got hacked as he went in underneath. Uh, walking on Logan. The turnover. First turnover of the game for Nebraska. Nebraska leading by one. Sam Hill getting it to Virgil. This Nebraska club plays great defense. That has been a hallmark of Moiba's team. Hill banks it off the glass. Sam Hill, the junior from Chicago, has his first two points. And the Cyclones are back in the lead. Good assist by Tompkins with Hornacek there who set the uh, Big 8 career record for uh, assists. Tompkins kind of gets overlooked, but he's been over 100 assists in his first two years at Iowa State, which is an Iowa State and school record. Got a great assist man on the other, end, other side of the ledger, too, and Brian Carr just does a great job. He's working on 200 assists for this year. Shot was up by Marshall, wouldn't go. Hornacek feeds Virgil. Virgil from 15. Rebound, Bayless. Day takes the jumper and banks it in. Uses the glass, just great right there. Had the angle on it. Well, this looks like it's gonna be a dandy. That's the sixth lead change we've had in the first seven and a half minutes. Grayer can't get it down. Hornacek is there. Oh, nice job by Hornacek. I said he averages almost four rebounds a game, and he's a good jumper, plays the ball, and really works for the basketball. Good save there by Hornacek. And the Woo. basket by Tompkins and a foul. I'll tell you, that's some kind of play. Hornacek going good here in the early going. Watch this young man work, work, and work. Gets up over the top of the big guy for Nebraska, takes it up off the board, and now he'll counter again. And he's the guy that has to play for Iowa State and be an offensively. Here he comes on a steal, has the presence, backhand flip, knew right where Virgil right was there. And then a good pass by Ronnie Virgil. Tompkins for the easy two. Hornacek started his career as a walk-on out of LaGrange, Illinois. Now this from Budweiser. Field goal shooting over the early going. Nebraska still very hot. Iowa State, 46%. There's the rebounding. Free throw is up from Tompkins. 15 to 12. Iowa State leading by three. As Tompkins misses that free throw, Jay, it always amazed me. He shoot 59% from the, from the field and 39% from the stripe. Frustrating game sometimes. Brian Carr in the lane, banks it up, it won't go down, and here is a foul called on Logan. Logan going in there trying to get the rebound, commits his second personal foul. That's team foul number four. And what a force he's been. He has really been playing well since Hoppin went out. Inside, we talked about him, a great jumper, 41-inch vertical jump, so he plays much bigger inside than at 6'5". Hornacek, Virgil is there! Tremendous assist by Hornacek. Virgil has four points, 17 to 12, Iowa State. Well, right now, Iowa State has going for it what they want if they have a chance to win against Nebraska, and that's Hornacek. Hornacek has to be involved in the game offensively, and he has really struggled the last four or five games of the season. Jumper by Logan. Banked up, wouldn't go down. Harvey Marshall, back come the Cyclones. And this is what Iowa State likes right here is to get out and get off miss and get down the court. And last night, you know, Nebraska controlled Oklahoma State so much because they shot 70% in the first half. Bayless touched that last one and went out of bounds. Well, here's a good reason why this kid is the all-time Big 8 assist leader, the backdoor cut by Ronnie Virgil. That's the second one he's got. And again, that serves two purposes, an easy basket, but tends to take off the defensive pressure because you begin to respect that as a defensive player. Oh, what a pass, a spinning move by Bernard Day. Well, Day just answered everything Iowa State's giving on the other end right now as he's made some terrific.
terrific plays. He's five for five from the field, has 10 points, 17 to 14. Iowa State leading by three. We near the midway point of the first half. Thompson's trying to post up inside on Carr. Rayer, who had 18 points last night, has been kept out of the offense. Here's Hornacek, his 25-footer won't go. Harvey Marshall got the rebound. A chance for Nebraska to get back within one. Hornacek didn't get that shot, but that's where he is most dangerous in the offense. When you go to help, which Nebraska does, and we'll give him that shot, because he doesn't get many shots just on his own. Hornacek draws the foul as Bayless is charging his first personal 15 foul against Nebraska. Substitution coming into the game. Matsky is in there now, and Darren Brown, number 10, coming in as Bayless gets a rest. Along with Bernard Day. John Maskey for Nebraska has really come to life offensively. Uh, Jay, here in the last three ball games, he'd been at double figures only three times in 90 games. Now he's been at double figures three games in a row. Grayer stepped out of bounds. Turnover. The second for the Cyclones. 9.50 to play in this first half. 17 to 14. Iowa State leading. The winner will play Kansas tomorrow afternoon. Iowa State setting up in a 2-1-2, three-quarter press. Trying to get the trap. Just joining us, the Jayhawks were 72-70 winners over Oklahoma in the first semifinal today. Harvey Marshall is fouled in underneath. A foul charge to Ron Virgil. You know, that, his first. that Kansas win may be expensive. Uh, we had a bullet here with Kellogg. Uh, might have a severe groin injury groin pull and I noticed him limping in the last uh, minute and a half there but he did stay in the ball game well we'll have to of course see what transpires between now and tomorrow regarding Kellogg we understand it is not too serious and we will try to get further word on that at the foul line Harvey Marshall Marshall 0 for 3 from the field but he has five rebounds in the early going Cuts the lead to one, 17-16, Iowa State. Nebraska now full court pressure. Good little athlete right here, a freshman out of Detroit, Darren Brown. Sam Hill comes up short. Rebound taken in there and put up and in. That's Elmer Robinson in the lineup now. Robinson out there for Iowa State, along with Virgil and Tompkins and Hornacek and Hill. Robinson off the bench gives him some offensive punch. Uh, he had 16 the last time uh, these two teams met and was really instrumental coming off the bench as Iowa State was in deep foul trouble in that game. Ryan Carr driving, finding a seam, gives it off nicely for the basket by Harvey Marshall. Nice assist. Beautiful pass, answering anything that Hornacek is doing on the other end. Hornacek on the other end defensively didn't get his man sealed off and uh, left the passing lane open. Eight and a half to play in the first half. Robinson dishing it to Hill. The basket I don't believe will count as there's a foul charged on Robinson. Robinson committing his first personal foul. Well, here's a look by, excuse me, Jay, why Brian Carr is Nebraska's all-time assist leader. Goes up, and I guess Hornacek was, came late as I saw him there, was not able to get there in time as he got picked off in a beautiful pass. Good job by Nebraska offensive man getting to the basket. Brayer coming back in for the Cyclones. Nebraska has in the backcourt right now number 10, Darren Brown, along with Brian Carr. Up front, they have... Marshall, along with Logan, and number 30, Bernard Day. Cyclones with Brayer and Tompkins and Hill and Hornacek, along with 25, Elmer Robinson. A lot of motion by Nebraska on their offense, and they're really moving. They're moving a little bit quicker than Iowa State is on their offense if they use the cutting game. Day missing the foul charge to Darren Brown. Number one on Brown, 16 foul against Nebraska. The 
Iowa State Cyclones have committed five team fouls. We have eight minutes, five seconds to play. First half. Iowa State leading it 19 to 18. Sam Hill gets it to Gray. Just not easy for Iowa State to get in their offense on the wing. They run the back cuts to get that right. pressure, but Nebraska stays right in there with that tough defense. Hornacek, Robinson, and the little jumper in the lane. A little garbage basket there by Gary Tompkins. You'll see a lot of action, and Iowa State has to be ready inside to dish the ball off again because of Nebraska's great helping defense. They'll plug that gap, then they'll leave a man, and you better be able to hit him. Tompkins has six points. And we're going to get a timeout. Got 7.25 to play in the first half. Iowa State has the three-point advantage at 21 to 18. Kansas won the first game, 72 to 70, over Oklahoma. We'll be back to find out who they're going to play in a moment. This is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports. Any reuse of this telecast without the express consent of Raycom Sports is prohibited. There is Dave Hoppen, the dynamite young man, the big guy who went down on February 1st, injured that knee in the Colorado game. And the Cornhuskers have really come together for Moiba. They are six and three since Hoppen, their All-American candidate, went out. They've just played excellent. They've regrouped themselves and uh, have to feel for that kid. You know, oh. there's something about tournaments when you come to tournament time, and he just has to be eating him up inside to have to sit there and watch his teammates play. What a splendid young man. Fine student. Here's Logan for Nebraska. Ryan Carr whipping it around today. Three-point lead for the Cyclones. Eric Brown is number 10. He's in there off the bench now for the Huskers. Nebraska using a lot of time off the clock. This is their type of game we've talked about. Carr couldn't get it from 30, but there's Logan. It won't go for him, and now a foul is called on number 25, Elmer Robinson of the Cyclones. And Robinson commits his second. There's action here as we go as Carr takes the outside shot. And Nebraska now showing a good job of getting on the inside on the rebounds as Iowa State fails to block off and seal them off the board. They get up there once, can't get it. And Elmer Robinson back over the top picks up the foul as Nebraska had three guys on inside position. That's five team fouls now against the Cyclones. Iowa State burying their defenses. They've been man for man, some pressure with traps, and now they're in the zone. Two, three. That's the way this game is played anymore, isn't it? The varying defenses. The shot won't go for Harvey Marshall. There's a foul called underneath. No basket. Mo Ibas, Nebraska Cornhuskers are down 21 to 18 with 624 to go in the first half at Kemper Arena. The second semifinal game of the Big 8 tournament. In the first game, it was a 72-70 victory for Kansas over Oklahoma. Chris Logan at the line at 13 points yesterday in his first tournament game here. Missing rebound taken by Sam Hill of the Cyclones of Iowa State. This is Hornacek. The Cyclones leading at 21 to 18. You say those 13 points by Logan, a career high for him last night. Well tapped high, Sam Hill. Well, they got it, but it wasn't executed properly. Uh, Sam tried to bail out of there too quick and roll, too anxious to go to the offense, and really didn't get the good pick. Sam Hill has four points. Iowa State beat Colorado 78 to 60. The Cornhuskers were victorious 82-75 over Oklahoma State. These two clubs playing in the second semifinal game here. I tell you, this offense of Nebraska, they're all moving. I watch Carr with Tompkins on him, and he is continually moving. Logan around for the jumper. Darren Brown. Darren Brown has his first field goal. 23 to 20. Three point edge for the Cyclones of Johnny Orr. 520 to go in the first half. Gotta be a plus for Nebraska. Brown hitting outside only averages uh, 1.5 a game on the season. Elmer Robinson from 25. It doesn't go down with the rebound to Tompkins. Fights his way in and scores. 
Iowa State uh, doing a good job, too, on the offensive board. They've got six points on putbacks here in the first half. And Tompkins has eight. Tompkins had 11 against Colorado last night. That ball saved by Sam Hill. It was a smart play there, Jay. When you're under basket, if you can't control it, try and if you can't throw it long, do not try and just center it right in underneath the basket. It's like centering that puck in hockey. You put it back there, and uh, bad things happen. Moss and Virgil are going to come in for the Cyclones when they have the opportunity. Logan hitting. Logan now with his first field goal. It's 25-22, and if Logan gets hot, the Cornhuskers get hot with him. Ooh, boy, there was a shot. Hill turned... Uh, Caught Logan with an elbow. And Mo Iba wanted a call for a charge on the play. Didn't get it. Hornacek from 17. Foul called underneath on Sam Hill, number 33. Moss, 45, and Virgil, 11, coming back for the Cyclones. It's the first time Moss has been in the game. Virgil, of course, was a starter. The one and one going into effect with 4.52 left to go in this first half. A little rough underneath. Yeah, Tom O'Neill, uh, watch here. Hill's going to turn, comes in here, Ooh. and Logan up there. That's a vicious elbow right there. He turned right in. I thought that Logan, when he came up in there, and he took the shot, and you know what he did? He wouldn't let anybody know he was hurt, but I noticed after the play was over, he kind of shook the cobwebs out, and official Tom O'Neill was checking with him if he's all right as he went up the court. Chris Logan with the free throw. He's a 62.3% free throw shooter. Logan averaging 5.8 a game. Now a center because of the injury to Hoppen. Three points for Logan. Nebraska today shooting 45% from the field at this point. Last night they were really lighting it up. 71.5. They had a great great shooting night last evening here. Well they got into good rhythm. Oklahoma State was playing a zone and uh, they moved the ball well. Got the open shots without much defensive pressure and they just riddled in there. Robinson banks it off the glass and the Cyclones go up 27-24. Robinson has four points. Robinson a member of that all Big 8 bench team. Uh, team reserved for those kids that come off the bench and play well and he's certainly done that for Iowa State this year. He's been a double figure six times coming off the pines. We talked about the strength of these two clubs. Both have good benches. Both Coach Orr and Mo Iba play a lot of people. Rayer has done a good job. You know, Marshall uh, last night seven for nine. He's a Big 8 all-defensive player two years in a row, only a sophomore. Usually unheard of for a freshman to come in and make a Big 8 all-defensive team. Shot is up by Brown. Darren Brown has come through with four points off the bench. 27-26, one-point Cyclone lead. Brian Carr is getting up, getting set to come back in the game. Here's a foul on Darren Brown. Brown second. Marshall goes out, Brian Carr comes back in. 17 foul with 2.55 to go in this first half, and Virgil will go to the free throw line. Virgil is out of Chicago, Illinois. Played there at Providence St. Mel, 6'4". This fellow's a very versatile performer. Has four points and two assists. Hits the free throw, another one coming for him. Jake, he's the kind of player to this team, even though he's a slight kid, at 6'4", 165, he really gives great chemistry to the team of Iowa State the way they play, because they're quick, they play up and down the court, and yet he can rebound well. And last night he set a tournament record for steals with six. He's very impressive. He does a lot more than you would think when you look at his physical prowess. 2.55 to play, first half. More of the Big 8 tournament in a moment. Johnny Orr. High school coach at Milton, Wisconsin, and later in Dubuque, Iowa. His 21st year as a head coach. And there's a young Big 8 basketball fan enjoying the action with you. <laughs> Can't find the camera, buddy. Come on. <laughs> hey, over here. Over here. Here we go. He still can't find us. This young man does not take direction well, does he? <laughs> We've got Carr and Day along with Brown, Bayless, number 14, back in the game, and Logan there for Nebraska. 
Carr getting a little rest to play. I think all 40 minutes last night has only been out three minutes in the last three games. David Moss, number 45, the big man in the middle now for the Cyclones. He's in there. Bayless giving it to Brown. Back to Bayless. The jumper by Brown. Didn't get this one. Moss rebound. Moss who just came into the game. Tompkins down court for the Cyclones. 2.15 to play in this first half. Pass inside. Tie up. And it will belong to Nebraska. On the tie up. The alternating possession. Nebraska has it. Four turnovers now charged against the Cyclones. Nebraska trying to get back within one. Car from 30. Oh, boy. I didn't know he had that kind of range uh, to go out that deep. He was bombing him last night, but right at the top of the key. That's from out in downtown country. Car. A 48.2% field goal shooter. He now has six points. And it's 29-21. Cyclones by one with a minute and 45 to play in this first half. In our day, a great defensive player. And Greer has not been in the action offensively very much here in the first half. I don't know, does he have, does he have the field goal or not? For, uh, really done a good job on Greer. This Nebraska club can scratch at you. They can play some defense. Right, Grayer 0 for 3, and he's going to have to get involved. The fourth leading scorer in the Big 8 Conference. Averaging better than 21 a game. A minute and 20 to go in the first half. Virgil to Moss. Foul on Bayless. He thought he got all ball, but there must have been some contact there. Second personal on Bayless. Bayless smiling, shaking his head. Came to Nebraska on a track scholarship. We talked about him as great leaping ability. He's a, a long jumper, did 25 feet, three-quarter inch in the Big 8 indoor meet. Hornacek's coming back in for the Cyclones. Let's take a look at this last one. Here's Dave Moss going up, and Bayless, whoo, that's a good block. Oh, it sure was. Can see nothing there but the ball. The Cyclones have made three out of six at the free throw line. Nebraska's four out of six at the line. Bayless is sitting it out now. That makes it a two-point lead for the Cyclones at 30 to 28. Hornacek and Tompkins, along with Robinson, Moss, and Gray are on the court for the Cyclones. It's a little thing, but a good job by Carr there, Jay, attacking the press. He's taking his time under control and waiting for the trap to come, and it just goes over the top and breaks the press down easily. Foul called on Tompkins. Oh, and Johnny Orr right in front of where the play took place. Look at him. Look at John. March those sidelines. Number two on Tompkins. Coach Orr and his assistant coaches. Very resplendent today in that red jacket. Now it'll be Virgil to return for Iowa State as Tompkins goes out. On the free throw line, Darren Brown off the bench. The freshman, an all-city performer from Detroit, Michigan, two for three in the field goal department. And he misses at the line. Nebraska had some free throw shooting difficulties in the second half last night. And they're an excellent shooting uh, free throw team, 74.9%. Uh, There's Grayer not able to get it down. Robinson tried. Now Moss. It won't go. Rebound to, Bri uh, to uh, Brian Carr. Carr whips it down there to the little guy, Darren Brown. A charge on Brown. That's three against Brown. A lot of action. Nebraska coming out and pushing it down on the break. Uh, as you said, they'll take it if the opportunity's there. Here comes Brown. Moss coming in, stands his ground. Brown hits him with the offensive foul. Give you Here's another view of it. Moss standing in there. Boy, there's a collision. The uh, big guy goes down, maybe acts a little bit with it, but I think it definitely was a good call. Bayless is set to come back in for Nebraska when he has an opportunity. He's got 15 seconds to play in this first game. State holding for the last one naturally. Uh, he got the lead by two. 
Jumper by Robinson won't go. And a foul underneath. Foul is on Moss. With one second left, Bayless comes back in for Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers will have an opportunity on the one and one coming up to tie this game. See, those are the kind of things that are just mental uh, breakdowns in the game right there. You know you're holding for the last shot. You're holding because you want the last two points if you get it. If it goes up on the board, you certainly don't want to take the chance of getting a foul. You give up the play at that time. Now you put Nebraska back on the line with Day, a chance to tie the ball game, go into half situation with some momentum going. He had his career high, as Gary told you, 25 points last night, cool as can be. He's taken up a lot of the slack in the scoring since the Hoppen injury. He is five for six from the field. The score tied at 30. Second time we've been tied, and we come to halftime. So Nebraska and Iowa State are dead even after the first 20 minutes of play. Johnny Orr taking his Cyclones to the dressing room. And down the way, Mo Iba doing the same with his Nebraska Cornhuskers. The winner of this second semifinal game will go up against Kansas. Kansas defeated Oklahoma 72 to 70 earlier this afternoon in the first semifinal game. At the half, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Iowa State Cyclones tied at 30. Not really a surprise, I don't think. This game was expected to be close. Iowa State has beaten some pretty good teams. Nebraska, a team that's just been getting better every single day. Like to see both of these teams in the NCAA tournament. Remember, tomorrow, we'll have the final. Kansas Jayhawks, number two in the country, number one seed in this tournament, already in the final, and they'll play the winner of the game you're watching right now, Nebraska and Iowa State. It is tied at the half, and we'll be back with more from Kemper Arena after this. Into this game, there were seven lead changes, and Iowa State gets a lot of leads. They just need to learn to keep a couple. Bernard Day, the big gun for Nebraska. He led all scorers with 12 points. Great basket there for Bernard. Jeff Hornacek is the leading assist man in Big 8 history. If you want to know why, he had one in the first half. And that was it. A great pass inside to Virgil. And Iowa State again leading in that first half as they led most of the half. But Nebraska kept coming back. And what they do these days, they spread the offense around. They've been able to penetrate, as Carr does here. Gets the ball off to Marshall. Nebraska staying close, keeping the pressure on Iowa State all the way. Sam Hill only had two baskets, number 33 for Iowa State, but this is one of them. On a deflection, he finds it, and he knocks it in. The rebounds in this game were about even. The score is the same. It's 30 to 30, Nebraska and Iowa State. For all the statistics, let's go down to Jay and Gary. All right, and Gary, there they are. Both clubs right at 48% in the field goal shooting department. You look down at the stats and they even out almost entirely. Looks That's like why a, we looks got like a 30-30 game. 30 it? game, and it's <laughs> it's been well played. It's just good old country hardball defense by both clubs. Playing excellent defense, handling the ball. You see only four turnovers apiece, and uh, it's just going to be a matter of who can execute the best. You got to watch out for a run, maybe by one club or the other. They might hit a couple, three or four shots in a row, or a team make. Two or three uh, errors, and uh, the game might get away. It's this closely contested. Day leading the way with 12. Carr with six as you get a look at the scoring yep. for Nebraska. Tompkins with eight. Virgil with six. Hornacek with six. And Breyer held a one point, as we mentioned. Biggest lead for Iowa State, five points. That on three occasions. And Nebraska led by two at one point. Now this from Bud. That's how it stands. Nebraska and Iowa State in a beauty. It's 30-30 at halftime. Around the country, number one Duke, number one in the country, 75-70 over Virginia. The Cavaliers gave them a tussle. Georgia Tech and Maryland. Maryland has got a new life. They're tied. They've come close twice against Georgia Tech this year. In the Metro Conference, Memphis State had problems, but they beat Florida State. And Louisville, not too much trouble with Cincinnati in the second half. In the SEC, it's Alabama losing to Kentucky. Kentucky will be in the tournament, may meet them down the road. 
Southwest Conference, Texas Tech over TCU. About ready for the second half back to Jay and Gary. It'll be Hornacek along with Tompkins, Virgil, Grayer, and Hill on the court for the Cyclones. Matsky along with Harvey Marshall, Brian Carr, Chris Logan, and Bernard Day are out there for Mo Ivas Cornhuskers. We're tied at 30 as we go into the second half. Pass in under to Grayer, and it won't go for him. There Grayer is still held to just one point in this game. But there is the first move by Iowa State to show you they're going to come out looking for Grayer as they run him from the weak side, trying to give him a post-up situation. Do get him the shot. Nebraska running the motion offense that Mo Iba's made so famous. This one will not go down for Marshall. Long pass comes down to Virgil. He drives in and gets it. Got the nice assist from Gary Tompkins. Boy, and the key to that play was Tompkins out there giving the ball up ahead. A lot of guys will keep that basketball, but when the guy, offensive man, is even to give it to him, he can beat him to the basket, and that's what Virgil was able to do for two. Virgil has eight points. We've got... I think Grayer uh, was back on Bernard Day uh, in the first half. He's covered. He picked up a couple fouls and they had to take him off. He's covering different man. But they've got him back on him now. Carr's jumper blocked by Tompkins, but Nebraska retained possession. Mo Iba wants a new 45, and he got it. And the shot is put up and won't go and batted away. And it's Virgil off the Hornacek. 19-footer. Hornacek. He's the key to this the Cyclone Club always getting out, and the key there is, again, if they're able to get out and run and get in motion, and I think this club shoots better also when they're able to do it in transition rather than just a half-court game. Hornacek has eight. The Cyclones are up by four. Logan, you may remember last night, injured his ankle, had to come out. It was Tate. There's Carr to Logan. Won't go for him. Hornacek with a rebound, and he's on the run. Hornacek off on the right side. Grayer! And there's what Iowa State, we talk about, want to do, and Mo Iowa's going to get a timeout. I look across the way. He doesn't want to turn this Iowa State crowd on, which is he more heavy than anybody else except Kansas right now. Here's that last pass by Hornacek as he comes down court after getting the rebound. And he does the job. He makes them go. 36 to 30, Iowa State. Now this from Bud Light. With Gary Thompson, Jay Randolph, and your host, Kevin Kiley, of course, here with you. Big 8 tournament action, second semifinal game. 72-70, Kansas won the first semifinal in a dandy over Oklahoma. Iowa State pumped up a little bit now over those two transition baskets. They've had three breaks in the ball game uh, for six points. Those four coming right there. Nebraska has had none. And now they come out and trap right away as their adrenaline seems to be going. That was Bayless who put up the shot. He's back in there for Nebraska, number 14. Nebraska 0 for 5 from the field in the second half. Hornacek says, I'm going to take it out. Now he brings it back, and he drew the foul. Boy, he's a clever kid, isn't he? Third personal foul on Bayless. For some people that think, although Hornacek is not what you would call quick, and he can play in the NBA. I always say the only thing on him is might be a step slow. But uh, again, in this surge, it was Hornacek. Remember, the blocked the shot, got it out on the break on the two-on-one, and then he came back with the, the rebound, offensive or the defensive rebound, and took it down on the break. So he was responsible for both of them. Gary Tompkins missing it in close, and now all the officials get together and change the call. It'll belong to the Cyclone. There's Woody Mayfield smiling as they go back after the conference. Here's Tompkins comes in. Carr tries to go behind, can't get it. Misses the layup here. Ball's tipped around. There you see, I think it was Matsky's hand right there that knocked it out of bounds. 
Virgil, Hill, Tompkins, Hornacek, and Gray are out there for the Cyclones. Said this game has been close to fought the whole way. Iowa State here with a chance to take the biggest lead, uh, go up by eight if they can get two. Shot by Hill way off. He just, he said, oh, what happened there? <laughs> Logan turning, banking it in. And Hornacek wanted to charge by Logan against him, didn't get it. Logan has six, it's 36-32. Quite a turn around there. Uh, Sam Hill there severing the embarrassment of that air ball. And looked like he had an easy shot maybe for two and Nebraska uh, counters. Grayer goes in and gets a couple. Grayer now has five points. He was held to one in the first half. He's heating up. That'll please Johnny Orr as he gets up and chairs that because they have to have that man. Uh, although Hornacek is the guy yet. And you can see Grayer get 20 or 25, but if Hornacek is not in the ball game, now Iowa State normally does not come away with that W. Bayless getting the basket there, his first of the game, 38-34. Seven. We said Iowa State putting the emphasis on the offensive uh, end to come out and get the ball to the Grayer. Six in this half for Grayer and a 40 to 34 score on the board favoring the Cyclones. It's going to be Marshall in the day. They're probably going to have to come through, although Bayless hits that outside shot. Offense uh, day has been a little quiet since the opening. Minutes of the half. Hornacek is fouled. The shot doesn't go for him. Foul charge to Matsky of Nebraska, his second. Uh, second team foul. He played five minutes of this second half. 40 to 36. The Cyclones, Hornacek on the line. 640 career assists coming into today's game. He makes the Cyclones click, this fella right here. Hornacek, eight points, six rebounds already, and two assists. That's six rebounds for a fella who is 6'3". And he's moved into Jay in the number seven all-time Iowa State scoring list. Passes Robert Estes. Uh, Robert Estes played for Iowa State, grew up here in, in Liberty, Kansas. 41-36. Might be Liberty, Cyclone. Missouri, I think. Liberty, Missouri is correct. It's where the Kansas City Chiefs hold their training camp every summer. 41-36, Cyclones. Shot put up. And Matsky misses oh. twice after Logan had had it. They still got it. And scoring is Bernard Day. Well, the fourth time was the charm. You say is now uh, Grayer took a shot in the eye, and we have a momentary pause as Woody Mayfield checks him out. Looks like it was going to be a tough break for Nebraska. There's Matsky had point blank shots and couldn't get him down, but they finally came away. Here's Matsky. The offensive rebound doesn't get it. Comes right back to him. He takes it up on the jump. Doesn't get it. Come right back there and got. You saw Grayer getting it across the face. 41-38, Day has 14 points. He is six for seven from the field. Hornacek pops it from 18, won't get down for him. Rebounded underneath there by Bernard Day. Ryan Carr back to the attack for the Huskers. Matsky from 17, doesn't get it. Boy, this is unusual, Day. The air balls that we've seen, and uh, not for long range. Here's Grayer. Well, he's he's got the range now. Grayer has nine points, all eight, uh, eight of the nine in the second half. Just went over the 1,000-point mark in his career. 13 and a half to play, 43-35, Cyclones. Only a sophomore, uh, he's going to test and probably will if he keeps up without injuries or anything, uh, passing Barry Stevens, who has that Iowa State record. Clean Boy, it's good, tough basketball day. It's just execution. Both teams playing good defense. Bayless comes through. And there's execution. Iowa State coming up to help on defense, much like Nebraska there. And then Carr just going to the open guy. And then Bayless getting the shot down. Bayless cuts the lead to three, and he has six points. Foul inside on Bernard Day as he came over the top. 
It'll be Harvey Marshall, number 13, returning to the Nebraska lineup. Final in the ACC, ooh, Georgia Tech, a squeaker over Maryland. The Terps losing by two. That was just over, and we update you on it. Matsky sitting it out now for Nebraska. As we indicated, Marshall is back in there. Ronnie Virgil off the horn a sec, off the glass. Now those are the things that Virgil will do. Uh, I mentioned his chemistry. He can penetrate, find the open man. Boy, Nebraska counter right back. Tough luck again as they miss a cripple. They missing the layup. And back the other way and a foul call. As Tompkins was driving in there, Brian Carr commits the foul, his first. And Iowa State now getting the, in the second half what they want. Good outlet pass here by Sammy Hill, finally finding Gary Tompkins. A little change of pace dribble comes in. Carr probably should turn him loose right there. But he likes to go over the top, try and get the block, but picks up the foul. The car goes out. Number 10, Darren Brown, is back in on the line. Gary Tompkins, eight points. He's four for seven from the field and 0 for one at the free throw line. Tompkins, an All-American from Jackson, Michigan. He attended one of Johnny Orr's basketball camps at Michigan. That's how Orr first became familiar with the young man. Matsky will come back in for Nebraska. Seven-point lead for the Cyclones. Their crowd getting into it. Well, they're giving Tompkins a hand for those free throws because, as we said, he has really struggled. They're well aware of that. 39.5 free throw shooting on the season. The biggest lead of the game now, seven for the Cyclones from Ames. Now this game taking on a little bit of what uh, happened at that last ball game that these two teams met at Ames was that Nebraska was in the ball game the whole way and they're controlling the game. And then finally, Iowa State in the second half was able to get into the transition game for a few possessions, and that uh, spelled the difference. Ron Virgil commits his second personal foul. A timeout. 11.56 remaining to be played. 47 to 40. Iowa State leads. The winner of this one plays Kansas tomorrow. This is from Bud Light. Well, you got a look at Kemper. Nearly 17,000 were here this afternoon. We don't have that many now. A lot of the Kansas folks have gone home to prepare dinner and think about tomorrow. Kansas will play either Iowa State or Nebraska. And those second half field goal percentages, you saw, you saw the difference. Moved Iowa State out to a seven point lead. Nebraska five out of 15 in this second half. While Iowa State a blistering seven out of 11. Cornhuskers down seven. Let go, let go. He's a guy that maybe needs to get in the ball game. Marshall, a good outside shooter, all in Nebraska. Iowa State in the first half had 11 out of 13 baskets inside of 10 feet, while Nebraska only had three. So Iowa State's been a had a little bit more success of going underneath, and of course that counts for that percentage. Darren Brown dishes it off. The shot is up and good by Harvey Marshall. Just the guy we're talking about. He's a streak shooter. He can get things going. Marshall has six. The lead is five. The cycle is underneath. Back door. Robinson. No basket. He is fouled by Marshall. Another fine assist by Hornacek. And I wonder if this came out after the timeout. I think this is their first possession as they come back door. Hornacek into Robinson does not get the basket as Marshall comes in and hacks him across the arm. But Robinson to the line for two. Marshall's first personal foul. Elmer Robinson had eight against Colorado. He's from LaGrange, Illinois. In the first half, uh, Robinson off the bench. We talked about him being on the all-bench team. He had four points and uh, three rebounds. His high this year was 16 against Nebraska. Brian Carr back in for the Huskers. And going out 
Darren Brown. Rebound taken down by Marshall. They can cut the lead back to four with a bucket here. Here the Huskers as we have 11-10 to play in this ball game. Iowa State's defense really sagging back in, and that's one reason why Nebraska has had trouble getting inside with the ball. Turnover. No, oh, a not pleased with that, you can bet. He does not like those turnovers. That's only five, though. I was going to say, there have not been very many by either team. There's four each at halftime. Ten forty-one to play. 48-42. Iowa State leading in the second semifinal game of the Big Eight tournament. Mo Ivas. Nebraska Cornhuskers will have to come from behind if they're going to win their way into the final against Kansas tomorrow afternoon. We just had a foul called on day. The Cyclones with the jumper from deep in the corner by Hornacek. Hornacek now with 13 points and it's 50-42. Biggest lead of the game. Eight points for the Cyclones. And Hornacek is six out of nine from the field. And both Iowa State's guns right now in this basketball game. Greer, after being held to one point in the first half, has come back strong. And they're really working the ball to him last night. It was Greer six out of 18 and Hornacek only two for 10, even though they won. Bernard Day taking it down there in the middle in heavy traffic. The foul charged on Sam Hill is his second. That's just team foul number two against Iowa State. Nebraska has committed six team fouls. David Moss, number 45, replaces Sam Hill for the Cyclones. You know, Jay, I'm, I'm watching. You always look for that sign. If Nebraska, some of the kids uh, looked at Day starting to reach for those pants a little bit, uh, it may be a little tired, fatigued, because they've played a lot of minutes here in recent years. Day is six out of eight from the field. Now two out of three at the free throw strike. Fifty to forty-three, Cyclones by seven. Ten minutes to play. Boss getting it around to Tompkins underneath. A foul called as it was Elmer Robinson going up in there. There's Mo Iba. This could well be the last game he ever coaches for Nebraska. Iba's contract is up. There are rumors that he has indicated to some people in San Antonio that he might be interested in going to University of Texas San Antonio. Free throw is good by Robinson. That's what he likes to do as you look at Mo right there. Uh, I think he'll get a good one. <laughs> Gary, I believe he will not be back in Lincoln. Teams are always sound. Seven points now for Elmer Robinson. 52-43. Nine-point advantage for the Cyclones. Bayless took the shot. He was fouled. Foul is on Moss, and he says, me? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> there he put his hand up, finally. There's the action as Nebraska now get inside. Haven't had much success in there, but Moss coming over to help on defense. Gives him a Across the arm, Woody Mayfield pointing right to Dave Moss. Let him know he was the one that committed the foul. Bayless with six points and three assists in the game. Hits the free throw. 52-44. Ronnie Virgil, number 11, back into the lineup for the Cyclones. He'll replace Grayer. Kai last night had his career high rebound. 11 rebounds, only 6-4, but a good jumper. Greer going off with nine points, eight of them here in the second half. That guy does a good job for Nebraska Bayless. Anthony Bayless coming off the bench, uh, gives some good help defensively and offensively. Last night, seven points off the uh, four rebounds and four assists off the off the bench. He's a Californian from Canoga Park, went to Central Arizona Junior College. Austin to Virgil, nine and a half to play in this game. The winner to face Kansas tomorrow afternoon. 
championship game. Kansas, the regular season champion. Hornacek's shot won't go. Brian Carr rebounds. Carr for Nebraska. Into Logan. Couldn't get it down. Bayless is there in underneath. He gets it. And it's back to 52-47 now. A five-point advantage. Bayless has 10. this game that first half Jay, has taken his toll on both clubs. Both of them seem a little tired, not moving quite as quick. Boy, Ross. Robinson finds Moss all alone underneath and a foul on the play. The foul is on Logan, his fourth. I think hurt Nebraska. Logan, their big inside jumper, good rebounder. And Robinson, excellent pass to Moss. He takes it up, jams it down as Logan goes right after him and commits the foul. Sitting back down on his bench, a little disgusted. Moss will go to the free throw line. A senior from Franklin Park, Illinois, an all-stater. Moss has three points. Doesn't get it. Whistle. Somebody was in the lane. is going to get the shoot again as Grayer comes back in for the Cyclones and Virgil goes out. We thought originally the way uh, Robinson got in there so quick that maybe it was him. One. Well, Moss will get another opportunity. He's played well off the bench. <laughs> After one of those calls comes, everybody kind of <laughs> creeps in that next time, but nearly as quick. Four points for Moss, 55-47, the Cyclones. Good defense by Iowa State. Iowa State, we talked about Nebraska's defense, but they have played excellent defense, too. Going up for the shot was Harvey Marshall. The foul called Hornacek. His second. Hornacek's very adept at coming from behind to get those blocks. He had one earlier when they got out on a run. You see him right here. And boy, it looks like he gets all ball there, but the favor may be returned because we thought Bayless had one there earlier as Hornacek gets thumbs up once the jump is not happy. Here he comes from behind. Boy, unless I never saw any body call by the official, but it looked like he got all ball. Marshall now two for three at the free throw line. He's two for seven from the field. Marshall, a junior college All-American at Northeast Junior College. Came out of Jackson, Tennessee, where he was twice an All-Stater. 55 to 48, seven-point advantage for Nebraska. Grayer getting it off the top to Grayer. That's what Iowa State likes to do. Great ball handling right there. Great presence of mind for Grayer to get it to the guard. He can handle it. Good assist, man. And forces Mo Iowa to go to timeout again to, to quiet this crowd. Here's the way you run the fast break. If you're the Cyclones, as you see, the Grayer going back to the middle to Tompkins, right back and up for the hoop. 57-48, the Cyclones. Louisville, the Cardinals over Cincinnati, 86 to 65. Back to Jay Randolph and Gary Thompson. Kevin Kiley updating us on the scores around the nation and. He's been your host, of course, throughout this 1986 Big 8 tournament, the first Big 8 tournament to bring all eight teams here to Kansas City. And it's been fun to have everybody come in, Gary, like the old days when we used to have the Christmas tournament. But a lot more at stake here with, of course, all of the NCAA basketball ball committee here on hand getting ready for the bids tomorrow. Both of these clubs wanting to bid to that NCAA berth. Uh, Nebraska with 20 wins, Iowa State 19, trying to get their 20th there. Ryan Carr taking it in, bounces it off, and shot is way short by day, and it went out of bounds. Nebraska getting the good shots, yep. but not hitting them like they did here last evening for Mo Iba. Mo with assistance there, Tom Bach. 
Randy Cipriano. Randy, of course, is the son of the late Nebraska coach, Joe Cipriano, who was one of the most colorful and talented coaches in the game. And, of course, Iva was a longtime assistant to Cipriano. Prior to that, uh, worked for Donnie Haskins and was a coach at Memphis State when he was one of the youngest coaches in uh, the nation. Talked about this game being well played, Jay. Remember, there's four turnovers. Nebraska's turned it over twice in the second half. Iowa State, none, as they've really taken care of the ball. That's Robinson taking aim and coming through. Robinson now has nine points, and it is 59-48, biggest lead of the game for the Cyclones, 11, with seven minutes to play. And Robinson had that great assist uh, a few minutes ago in DeMoss, so he's been instrumental again coming off the bench, but Nebraska battling back. Logan gets it. He was fouled. He'll have a chance for the three-point play. Coming in is Darren Brown for Nebraska. Here it is right here. Giving off day to Logan. He takes it up. Four fouls. Able to get it up off the glass. Good strength. Picks up the foul. And Nebraska able to challenge here real quick. Was possibly a three-point play. Chris Logan. Three out of nine from the field. Two out of three at the line. Nebraska continuing to have a bit of trouble at the free throw line. It's a nine-point Cyclone lead. Matsky's back in the Nebraska lineup. It is Matsky along with Carr, Day, Logan, and Darren Brown. Now Hornacek is back in there for the Cyclones. There's the jumper by Robinson. It comes up short, rebounded by Logan. Off it comes to Carr. We've had a lot of air balls that way. Matsky, he can't get it. Rebounded down by Day. And the difference in the second half right now with 638 to play has been Iowa State's been able to get in a transition game up and down the court. What a splendid move by Bernard Day, who now has 17. And Nebraska battles back within seven. Johnny Orr kneeling in front of his bench. You see him in the red jacket right in the middle of your screen. Watching his Cyclones. Hornacek driving around Brown. Brown committed the foul before the shot. That's four on Brown. Iowa State still can spend the foul. They have committed five team fouls. Hornacek with 13 points. As high this year, 24 against South Dakota. Hornacek last night was only two for 10. Today, he's six for 10. He's a battler. What a kid. He walked on at Iowa State and has rewritten a lot of the record books. Boy, you saw look at Hornacek where he ends up. He thought he missed that. And he's going for the rebound. But that shows you intensity always in the game. Comes from an athletic family. His dad's an assistant uh, high school coach. He's got a brother playing professional baseball in the Dodger organization. 15 points for him. Iowa State leading 61-52. Six minutes left to play. Carr in trouble, lost it. Iowa State has really covered up inside. Oh, and here's a turnover as Gary Tompkins couldn't hold on. Darren Brown, Suze getting it to Matsky. Jumper won't go down for Day. Moss rebounds for the Cyclones, up to Tompkins. The other thing that's happened, Nebraska had not been shooting well in the second half. Of course, that allows Iowa State to get out and run, or at least attempt to get into the running game, and they've done that pretty well. Foul on... Matsky. And that's a collision Robinson's put together real well. You don't want to collide with him too often. Matsky committing his fourth. Third personal on Matsky. All right, three on Matsky. And on the line, Robinson and Matsky's coming out. And Harvey Marshall is back in for Nebraska. 
Matsky, uh, he's looking at him there going off a good defensive player. Uh, usually not much offensively, although we have to say that he's been in double figures the last three games, but Marshall in there, uh, Nebraska needs some offense. They've got to get some points on the board. Robinson hits the free throw. 10-point lead for the Cyclones. Gary, I want you to talk about the black band on the shoulders and the tragedy that befell, of course, the athletic family at Iowa State. Right, it was the members of the uh, women's cross-country team and the coaches and the pilot. The pilot was a good friend, uh, a couple of the coaches, and uh, it's a tragic thing. They still don't know the cause of that plane, but it went down and uh, killed seven people. Charge against Darren Brown. That's five, and he is out of there. Brown off the bench, committing five with five minutes to play. Bayless comes back in. It is Bayless and Carr, along with Bernard Day, Logan, and Marshall on the court for Nebraska. Brown had four points. second half he only had one point at halftime he now has 13 in the game and it's 65 to 52 13 point cyclone lead listen to these cyclone fans that shot won't go for Marshall rebound to Moss and the cyclones look like they're gonna get their shot tomorrow they beat the Kansas Jayhawks at Ames, can they do it at Kemper tomorrow? Shot wouldn't go for Robinson. Moss scoring. And there's another difference. Iowa State has been able to keep Nebraska out of the paint pretty much the most of the ball game, and Iowa State's getting inside. Consequently, the percentage, the shooting percentages are just spreading apart. 15-point lead for the Cyclones. Three minutes and 52 seconds remaining to be played here. We'll be right back after these messages from Bud Light. Iowa State, under Johnny Orr, has the lead. Jay, last time we talked about the bench that Iowa State maybe had the better of the bench uh, offensively anyhow, and Robinson and Moss were instrumental in that win at Ames, 81 to 73. In this ball game, Robinson's come off, got 11 points and three bounds. Moss has six points and five rebounds, so they've been very instrumental. Nebraska will have to turn up the afterburner. Second half, 13 out of 20, 65% from the field for the Cyclones. Clearing out for Carr. Thought he was going to just take him one-on-one, -on -one, stack down, and get the double pick for Bayless. Bayless couldn't get it. Rebound by Moss. Boy, Moss has done an excellent job. Well, and the Huskers have really gone cold shooting-wise, uh, although most of it's been from outside. Last night, 64%. Excuse me. Logan driving oh. and stuffing it. Moss has five rebounds off the bench. That was a point I wanted to make. 67-54. Here's Logan. I'll tell you, this Nebraska bunch, they will scratch back whenever possible. They'll try to get the job done. And of course, and here's a foul, as Day didn't get it to go down, but he'll go to the line, and Hornacek appeared to hurt his shoulder. Well, let's see the X. I don't know who they've called the foul. I think it was on Logan. See you come back. Day goes up, stops, Plants goes over the top, doesn't get the shot as they've had hard luck getting down, and then Logan right over the top of Hornacek. Mm. That's his fifth. Well, he's out with 10 points and six rebounds. Newbert coming in for Nebraska, also in there for Nebraska. Number 22, Joel Sealer. Logan sits down. Hornacek will be at the line. 67-54. Cyclones. When you go back to this kid that's on the line for Iowa State, uh, there's a happy Iowa Stater right there. But when Hornacek goes, then Iowa State goes. It just boils down to that. This is his 105th consecutive start today. 
pretty good career for a walk-on. You bet you. <laughs> he's a tough, tough, hard-knocking kid. He gives it everything he's got out there. That matter they all do, you know. He is really a, a fellow, as I said earlier, that makes the Cyclones trick, and he's got 17, and it's 69-54. Cyclones leading three minutes to play. Brassett can't turn the ball over too often on their offense here right now. They've got to try and make something happen, maybe give up, maybe go a little one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's the 2.48. It looks like it's too late anyhow. This building will be rocking tomorrow afternoon. A lot of Cyclone fans have come down from Iowa. And of course, the Kansas contingent jammed this building earlier this afternoon. The game is sold out. We hope many of you will be able to join us over most of these stations tomorrow for the championship game. Hornacek took it, and Robinson got it and scored it. Well, when things go right, uh, they go right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give him an assist on no. that, can you? <laughs> Here's Arnesek with a steal. And now Moss goes for it. Look out. Tie up. Is that Day down there holding his eye? Might have got... Moss went down on top of him. Got a little rough. 71 to 54 the score with 150 left and boy he appears to be in some pain there well, there's a real scramble here as it got away from Hornacek he tries to come back right here can't get it the ball get deflected away again as he goes down Moss comes after now there's where they oh he got the hand yeah. it's he looked like he got hit in the leg and in the face but uh, Bernard Day is up Hornacek helping him up there Nice sportsmanship. 17 points and five rebounds for Bernard Day. Let's watch Day here. We can see his legs if they slip and go under him. And he just Ooh. does a split. Ooh, boy. It looked like that left ankle might have taken quite a beating there. 71 to 54. The Cyclones with a minute and 45. That hurt just looking at it. Bayless hits it. Also, as I indicated, it looked like he might have hurt his eye. And, and that's what they are looking at. He got it at both ends of the spectrum. 71 to 56, a minute and 35 to go. Cyclones are going to meet Kansas in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. And Johnny Orr is going to get some of the fellas up off the bench. I see he's getting Eli Parker up over there along with Maurice Poole. Moss scores. Moss has played very well today off the bench. He's done Moss has eight points. He's done a good job for Johnny Orr. He started as a sophomore, uh, had 25 starts, and didn't play much uh, last year. But in a relief role this year, has really done an excellent job for him as a spot player. Newbert's shot wouldn't go. And Johnny takes out his five and puts in another five. And the Cyclone fans on their feet. State going to go to 20 and 9. This has been their best finish in the Big 8 since the 77 78 season. Second seeded. So it's going to be the number one seed and the number two seed. Things went pretty much to form, Gary. Johnny Orr, a happy coach, is the second team to win more than 18 games two years in a row, and 18 wins was the record prior to last season. Long shot that comes off, taken by Sealer. And that one is put up and good by Eli Parker. His first basket of game, of course, he just came in, 75-56. Showed good hands right there, good catch of the ball, and still had good touch to put it up off. Newbert following after the shot was taken over there by Bill Jackman, who's in the game now for Nebraska. <laughs> they're all going to get some yes, shots now. Sir, they're going to take a bomb. That was Daryl Spinks taking that long shot. Bayless for Nebraska is fouled. A foul committed by Eli Parker is his first. Five seconds left to play. 
the Iowa State brain trust right there. Congratulate himself. Well, Johnny had his bunch very, very ready to play here today, and uh, they were able to pick up the pace when need be. This game was tied 30-all at halftime. The Cyclones taking control in the second half, lead at 75-58. to 58. That was number 22. Sealer going in to put it in play. Bayless put it up and wouldn't go. Iowa State has only committed 16 fouls. Basket is no good. It was put up by Ronnie Virgil, but didn't go. 75 to 58. The Cyclones have won it. They're in the final game tomorrow against Kansas. Johnny Orr's bunch. Well, happiness reigns for the Cyclones, and of course, it'll be interesting to see what happens to Moiba's coaching career. 75-58. The Iowa State Cyclones defeat Nebraska to gain the finals. Some travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines. Whether you're traveling to Florida for spring training or spring vacation, Eastern's going your way. Come fly with Eastern. State over Nebraska, 75 to 58. A little bigger score than we anticipated. Coach, congratulations. Johnny Orr, head coach of the Iowa State Cyclones. Well, you've won another shot at Kansas. Does that make you happy? Well, sure it does. They're a great team, and my team comes up there when they have to play. Today, they worked awfully hard. We told them at the half, they just had to go out and work harder than Nebraska. If they did that, they could win the game. And we really shut them down, 58 points. Moss come off the bench. Elmer Robinson did a great job, and I thought they all were good. Hornacek had a great day for us. He certainly did, especially in the second half. It seemed that against Colorado last night and early against Nebraska in the first half, you kept getting leads, and, and everybody kept catching you. Why was that? Well, they played well. Nebraska, all their shots were outside, and we figured they couldn't keep making those shots just continually. If they did, then we were going to lose. But we did a good job, and we really put the pressure on them, and... We seem to come through in, uh, when we have to do it, and that's a good thing about this team, Kevin. That's and it, our 20th win, you know. Yeah, I know it is, and, and you've had a great season with a very tough schedule. Uh, in case you're interested, Nebraska did shoot about 70% in the first half last night, and then today they shot under 50%, probably around 45%. It seemed to me in the second half, Greer and Hornacek especially came out very aggressively. Did you tell them to take control of that offense? We told uh, Greer he had a bad first half. We told him to come. We went right to him, and he missed that first shot. But we knew he was going to come back and play. He's a great player. And he's a great competitor, and he's a fine young guy, boy. It's been noted, it's been noted that you've been very successful at home this year. In fact, you beat both Kansas and Oklahoma at home. Tomorrow, of course, you'll be here in Kansas City. You'll have to take on Kansas in front of a very explosive crowd. Uh, how will you approach that game? Well, we're going to approach it. They won one, we won one, and we're going to have to really play. Kansas is a great team, Kevin. But we beat Michigan State and Iowa, too, and we beat Kansas once. A week ago uh, today, they give us a good beating out there in Lawrence, so we got to come back. I, I admire uh, Larry Brown, his whole team. I think they're great kids, and I think they're great representatives of the Big Eight. And I hope we can be the same. Okay, Coach, well, it was a great win, and you have a great opportunity tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Right now, we're going to go over to Gary Thompson with one of the big stars of the game. Well, that stars, one of them is Jeff Dreher, uh, the leading scorer for Iowa State. And, Jeff, it was a quiet first half for you personally. Well, um, you know, they were really pressuring me um, down low on the post. Every time I got it, they was, like, double teaming me. And um, it just so happened that the guys outside started hitting the shots. It looked like in the second half the game plan was to come out and really get the ball to you because the first play, uh, they tried to post you up. Yeah, well, he, he he called the first play, you know, our two play, and that's the, for me to run down on the post. And they got it down there to me, and I um, missed the layup, and then, you know, I just kind of got myself right back into the game. The start of the ball game, you opened the game with a back cut. Was this a, a design play that Johnny Orr had set up because of Nebraska's terrific defensive pressure man for man? Yeah, it was. Um, Nebraska, they really come out and they front you out on the defense, and um, they keep a hand out in front of you, so you have to um, somewhat back cut it. Nebraska played a lot 
of basketball with their front liners uh, last night. I thought in the second half they appeared to get a little tired. I didn't think Day put as much pressure defensively on you in the second half and allowed you to get loose. In the second half, it looked like he kind of bagged off a little bit. And uh, when I saw him bagging off, that's when I tried to take it to him. Good uh, transition game. Finally busted the game open for you, too. Uh, you weren't able to run in that second half or first half. Yeah, I know. That's uh, the thing. We had to really get back into running our fast break like we used to doing. And uh, when we started doing that, that really opened the game up. Well, Jeff, you had a nice ball game. Good luck to you in the finals. Thank you. Now let's go over to Jay. All right. And I'm with the fellow who walked on and has done such a wonderful job. The senior, Jeff Hornacek. Jack tonight uh, 17 points for you and seven rebounds and a wonderful second half to give you this 75 to 58 victory well, he played hard tonight and Nebraska is a team that always seems to give us trouble they put uh, great defensive pressure on us and uh, tonight we ran our offense well and we were patient we got some good shots you were 30 all at halftime was there a key in your mind in the second half no, I think uh, every time we come out of halftime, we want to come out in the second half and get a get a good start going. And, uh, you know, we reeled off six straight points, and I think that got us going. You were only two for ten from the field last night. And this afternoon, six for 12. Things went a little better for you from outside. Uh, my shot hasn't been on the last five or six games, but, uh, you know, I think I still, still miss some easy ones tonight, and hopefully I can uh, hit those tomorrow night. You, of course, have beaten Kansas this season at Ames at Hilton Coliseum. You have a chance to beat them here tomorrow. They are the regular season Big A champions, number two in the country. You fellows need no motivation, but what do you need to do to win? What made it happen for you up at Ames? I think our big thing is to uh, keep their big guys off the boards. Uh, we went down to Kansas. They got a lot of second and third shots on us and a lot of easy ones. And tomorrow night we did a good job. Well, tonight we did a good job in rebounding. And tomorrow night we, I think we have to go out there and block out Dryling and Thompson and Kellogg and, uh, of course, Danny Manning. And we just got to go out there and, uh, you know, work hard and get them off the boards. You may think you have more time to rest than you do. It's an afternoon game. We're going to play a little afternoon tomorrow. Uh, that's all right. We're fired up. And when you get in this kind of situation, you know, it doesn't matter when you're playing. Are you ready? Let me ask you, who do you feel you'll be handling when you're man-to-man? -man? Uh, probably Cedric Hunter. I think, uh, you know, in the games we played against him before, I've, I've been out on him, and uh, either him or Calvin Thompson, one or the other. Well, we look forward to tomorrow's game. I know you fellows are looking for it. It's a wonderful capper for you. You've battled your way through a long period of time and played so well your senior year now at Ames, and uh, I know you are looking forward to this very, very much. Oh, I am. You know, I think our whole team is, and we're just going to go out there and give them a fight. This has been a marvelous tournament this year in the fact that they brought all eight teams in for the first time, and uh, the, the chemistry here at Kemper in Kansas City was very special, and certainly you're well supported. Oh, yeah. You know, our fans are great, and they're great at home, and they came out here and followed us out here, and it's, it's been giving us a big lift in these games. Very best of luck to you. Jeff Hornacek of Iowa State. Thanks a lot. All right, and that's the situation as we get to talk it over right now with a man who played some great basketball at Iowa State himself, Gary Thompson. Well, Johnny Orr is to be congratulated, and these kids of his really did a job in the second half. I heard you talking with Jeff Breyer about the fact that you thought Nebraska got a bit tired, but I think the credit has to go to the Cyclones. They made it happen with the pace of their play and intensity. Well, I think that was it, Jay. The transition game is always their game. They're able to do it. Nebraska had a little problem offensively, could not get the shots down. And we talk about Nebraska's defense because they're always tough defensively. They lead the league. But Iowa State played great defense defense today and shut them off inside and that allowed him to get out on the break as Nebraska kept missing from outside 75 to 58 the Cyclones are winners here in the second game and they go against Kansas earlier today Kansas in a squeaker 72 to 70 over Oklahoma we look forward to having you with us tomorrow afternoon of course for the championship game for Gary Thompson Jay Randolph let's turn it back to Kevin Kyler